Hello, everyone. I'm Deepti Rao. Uh, I'm a product technical PM at uh, Meta FinTech uh, in the Web3 team. Uh, me and my team, we build all things Web3 and blockchain uh, in the Meta world. Uh, so today, I'd love to uh, discuss the creator economy and Web3. Uh, so let's dive in. We have a lot of content. So uh, the agenda for today would be, uh, we'll cover a little bit of what Web3 is and why it's important. So we'll dive a little bit deeper into uh, what makes Web3 unique uh, and why is this a new paradigm shift in the way we uh, engage with the internet itself. Then we'll look at the creator economy, uh, the way it is right now, uh, a little bit about its evolution. Uh, and then we'll uh, actually uh, talk about how Web3 and the creator economy intersect. Uh, and uh, we'll also dive into some of the projects that Meta has been working on in the Web3 space. Uh, so let's dive in. So what is Web3? Before we talk about what Web3 is, uh, we'll uh, it'll help to set context in terms of what Web1 and Web2 were. Uh, so if you look at the evolution of the internet, uh, the first version of the internet was Web 1.0. It wasn't called Web 1.0 when it came out in the 90s. Uh, but now that we look back, uh, we would uh, call it Web 1.0 1 uh, in terms of its characteristics, right? So it used to be a read-only uh, protocol. Uh, the, the protocols were... Uh, decentralized and community governed, but most of the value was uh, accrued at the edges of the network. So if you remember back in the day, AOL, Yahoo, uh, it was just a means of consuming information. So there was no interaction with the internet. Uh, you would go into one of these sites and read up things that were published by people that worked at Yahoo or, the a or AOL or websites like that. So this was uh, the very basic version of the internet. It was a means of co consuming information, uh, mostly read-only. And then we uh, em entered into the web 2.0 space. Uh, this was starting from you know early 2000s. 2005, uh, in particular, uh, was a pivotal year. Uh, it was around the same time where Facebook, Google, all of them became popular. So this was uh, a more interactive version of the internet. This was where you could post your feedback, your comment, uh, and all of these uh, web pages or uh, these products on the internet were managed by corporations. So the Facebooks, Googles, YouTubes, Tumblrs of the world. So, and all the value that was accrued was centralized to these companies that were operating uh, the internet. So it did provide uh, an upgrade from web 1.0 where in the sense that the people using it could interact with it. They could post their comments, they could post their pictures, uh, they could share their views, they could write their own blogs. So it wasn't just one way consumption, it was interaction. However, they uh, did not have much control over the product itself. So uh, in a way, the people using the internet also became products, right? So, and uh, this was the entire paradigm of web 2.0. And uh, we saw the emergence of big tech. Most of us are uh, you know, thriving because of big tech as well, because of our jobs there. Uh, so, but however, there was no sense of ownership by the users. It was uh, centrally owned by these corporations and uh, the users could interact and use the internet in a way, uh, but all the value was accrued centrally. So now we emerge into this whole new paradigm shift of Web 3.0. And uh, as we speak, uh, Web 3.0 has been uh, this as a hype. A uh, lot of people say, what is the use case? Uh, so I agree that Web 3.0 does have a lot of fluff surrounding it. But at its very core, the technology is something that uh, provides you a way to co-own the internet, right? So it is decentralized, truly de decentralized form of internet that is owned by the people that use it, uh, the, that's owned by the builders, and it's orchestrated with tokens. Uh, blockchain is the underlying technology that enables all of this. Uh, so you, as a Web3 uh, participant, uh, will not only read and write 
uh, into this. Uh, you will also co-own the uh, the apps that you're helping build. And that is the, the central USP of Web 3.2. So uh, to be uh, to summarize, uh, Web 3 is a new iteration of the internet. It's based on blockchain, which incorporates concepts such as decentralization and token-based economics. And we will dive into this a little bit in uh, more detail. Uh, so what do you mean by decentralized? So if you look at Web 1 and Web 2, uh, the, uh, the servers that were hosting, say, a YouTube or Facebook, for that matter, were owned by those companies, right? Like Google owns YouTube. Uh, so the servers and the, the content also uh, is actually owned by these companies. So uh, Web 2.0 and all the products that were uh, result of or built on Web 2.0 uh, were uh, owned by some of these corporations. And all the value, all the profit out of it would actually reach the corporations. Uh, however, with Web3, uh, the whole concept of decentralization is that uh, the apps and the services built on this are not mediated by any corporation. Instead, individuals like you and me have the ability to govern sections of Web3. Uh, and that is the, the biggest uh, USP of Web3. Uh, and it's peer to peer. So in the absence of a central governing organization, uh, it, uh, Web3 depends on people like you and me, peers, to uh, enable transactions, to enable governance, enable data collection, uh, and decide on how that data is used as well. Uh, so Web3.0, that's why essentially will uh, be able to protect users' privacy as well. Uh, and the third concept of Web3 is ownership or tokenization. Uh, so we might have heard of a lot of crypto tokens uh, in the last couple of years. Uh, there's like new tokens launching every day. So what does this whole tokenization mean? So tokens are essentially the monetary incentive uh, that Web3 or blockchains uh, uh, by nature provide. Uh, to anyone that helps to uh, either create, govern, or contribute to to the uh, to the Web three uh, network itself. So Web three tokens are ba basically digital assets. They are associated with the vision of creating a decentralized internet, and this is the core of the ownership economy, which is facilitated by blockchain on Web three. So these protocols. Uh, so based on what. Um, blockchain we are using they would have a set of protocols in terms of how many uh, tokens do you get if you were to perform certain actions so for example if it's a if, if it's a blockchain that uh, needs uh, a proof of stake versus proof of uh, work so uh, depending on the 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 kind of blockchain it is it will provide you a set of tokens for performing various actions like computation for bandwidth for storage uh for hosting for uh, any of those purposes so this is so you can think of web3 as a uh, a peer-to-peer -peer decentralized economy uh where everybody participates to make web3 better and uh, participation will also result in uh incentives via tokens uh, so that uh, in uh, essence, is the the core concept of Web three. So, in the absence of this peer to peer decentralization, if you look at Web two, how are all these happening? You would have cloud providers. You would have uh, companies providing cloud storage, uh, like AWS, and you pay them for it. Uh, as uh, and then you would have companies providing security, maybe, and you'd pay them for that. Uh, you'd uh, have companies that would uh, provide central governance for the product. And uh, then you would either pay them uh, as a subscription or pay them for the service or pay them via your data, right? So that was the concept of Web2 versus Web3. Uh, you as a participant in the Web3 ecosystem would actually get incentivized for providing these services. And uh, this whole uh, new economy is made possible through blockchain. And uh, why do you think is why do you think this is important? So the the main uh, philosophy of Web three is that it aligns uh, network participants to all work together towards the 
common goal, which is the growth of the Web3 network itself. And as a result, all the network participants also get compensated via tokens. Uh, so there is a clear alignment of incentives. So the participants are not the products in Web3. Instead, they are co-owners of the network. And uh, everyone is working together to help the network flourish, help the network grow. And uh, they're all getting compensated accordingly. Uh, and uh, that is what makes Web3 so unique. and. Uh, this entire paradigm shift uh, is what makes this, uh, it, it, it's what sets the stage for uh, a whole new set of economic models um, to be kicked off. Okay, so now let's look at uh, creator economy. Uh, so we're going to uh, take a tangential route uh, and discuss what the creator economy is. Uh, in the Web2 world, and then we will uh, circle back to Web3 and see how the creator economy and Web3 will intersect. So uh, stay with me on this one. Okay, so what is the creator economy? Uh, so currently, creator economy consists of all kinds of creators, could be artists, singers, musicians, comedians, bloggers, uh, people like you and me that's uh, creating content, uh, educational content, any of that. So all of that would uh, be a part of the creator economy. And uh, this was uh, estimated to be over 100 billion uh, USD in 2021. Uh, so in Web 2.0, uh, all of us would uh, participate in the creator economy, either as a creator or as a, a corporation or a company enabling creators or as a consumer. So as a creator, my options were to post my content um, on say LinkedIn or on YouTube or on Udemy. And these were all platforms that were centrally owned by corporations. Uh, however, uh, my monetary benefit for my content was decided by this network, by this, by these corporations, right? Uh, so it was a very centralized nature in Web 2.0. Uh, in spite of that, the creator economy grew grew to over 102 billion in USD uh, in uh, 2021 uh, and over 1.3 billion in funding for products in Web 2.0 in the creator economy space. If uh, you might have heard uh, big corporations like Google and Facebook announce a lot of incentives uh, for creators in order to get people on their platform as well. So the creator economy really, really uh, grew in the last couple of years, especially during the pandemic, because more and more creators became digital natives. And in the last five years, we've had over 1 billion creators. So as you can see, the this, this is not a small number. Uh, this is a huge uh, market. Okay, now let's look at the evolution of the creator economy. And I touched upon this a little bit earlier. So in Web 1, it was information economy, right? Uh, so you had uh, companies uh, that were, uh, I would say, I wouldn't say they were web one, but let's look at the creator economy itself. Uh, in the first piece, uh, the centralized corporation solved for discovery and distribution. So if you looked at uh, creators on Instagram, YouTube, iTunes, Spotify of the world, uh, these so they went to these platforms to help get discovered to get more followers uh, and the platforms monetized based on how many followers you had by showing ads uh, to these followers for your content uh, in the second uh, stage of the creator economy uh, was where you had uh, you know influence the influencer economy or the platform economy so you as a creator could get a share for your um, for the revenue you were bringing to the platform through monetization rev shares, right? Like you could have affiliate links, uh, you would have a rev share with, um, say, YouTube uh, for the ads that were being shown for on your content. Uh, so you would get a, a cut or a, a portion of the revenue that YouTube was making out of your content. Uh, and that was a way for creators to monetize. Uh, and the affiliate uh, portion was where you would recommend products for companies and uh, as a result uh, of you know that based on how many people click through the links or how many people purchase the product you would get a 
commission or a share of the profits. Uh, so that was the platform economy. And then that progressed to uh, viewing creators as businesses. And this was the whole era where uh, we had Kickstarters, crowdfunding. So creators set up uh, a way for uh, people to fund their business. Uh, and become maybe co-owners or have get some incentives for that funding. Uh, we also have, saw the the emergence of platforms like uh, uh, you know GoFundMe and things like that, uh, where you could actually look at pet projects, uh, pet uh, the creators that you really uh, enjoyed or followed, and then fund their products as well. And then you also had the subscription-based funding where you had uh, the Patreons and the fan subscriptions of the world, uh, where you could subscribe to your creators, pay them something uh, every month, and then uh, incentivize them to produce content. So this was the uh, this was the evolution of the creator economy. Now, Web 3.0 uh, removes the intermediaries and uh, enables the creators to uh, directly connect to their followers, to their uh, fans. Uh, so, so that the creators and the fans become co-owners of the, the ecosystem rather than being consumers and producers. So that's the paradigm shift and that's the, the change in the model. We are moving from uh, creators uh, as, you know, uh, a way, uh, creators as just producers and uh, viewers as just consumers to being co-owners in the whole ecosystem itself. So, uh, so why is Web3 important for creators? Uh, again, uh, the entire concept of blockchain provides a way to authentically verify original content uh, and then uh, to be able to interoperate. So earlier, if you were a creator on, say, Spotify, uh, your content was tied to that platform and uh, you couldn't uh, take your followers, you couldn't take the content easily and Put it on a different platform so because these platforms are centralized and uh, owned by separate corporations they were siloed uh, so if you had to grow your following on youtube you couldn't take it to instagram and uh, so interop of your uh of your content was not available even though you were the content creator it was your own content there was no direct ownership of the content there was no ownership of the fans so if you quit instagram or if you quit youtube you'd lose all your followers from there. So you were actually dependent on the platforms uh, to continue the sustenance of your followership. Uh, with Web3, uh, because there is uh, no centralized corporation that's uh, acting as the gatekeeper of your followers, of your content, you'll be able to directly reach out to your fans um sell uh, to them directly interact with them directly um and also get paid royalties for continued usage of your content uh, so imagine a world where uh, i as a creator say i made this presentation and i uh, gave you this course content uh, and i get paid directly by you guys uh, and then every time you reference my uh, video or like every time it provides value to you or another person, I get a royalty out of that. So that would be the model that Web3 would enable for creators. So not only is the first time first time purchase enabled uh, directly uh, between the creator and the fan, uh, subsequent uh, usage can, based on smart contracts and how the protocol is set up on the blockchain, you will be able to enable royalties for the creator so that uh, due credit and due rewards uh, are uh, sent to the original creator as well. So this is what Web3 enables for creators. So as we can see, this is definitely uh, great for creators. It is definitely a, a way for creators to be able to make a living uh, and thrive. And uh, so it's uh, we are not the first ones. Uh, a lot of uh, venture capital companies have recognized this. Uh, so if you look at all the funding that happened in the last one or two years, uh, it's unprecedented. So, so rare is a blockchain based uh, NFT game uh, collectibles platform. They raised a huge series B round. And then MoonPay, again, a crypto payment infrastructure, raised a huge series A round. Uh, and then you had Forte and Dapper Labs, of course, uh, that's very famous behind the NBA Top Shot 
uh, uh, products, uh, they raised a huge Series D round. So all of this uh, unprecedented VC investment has happened in the last couple of years in the creator economy uh, on Web 3.0. So here's a, a quick summary of uh, Web3 so far. So you can see that um, currently it's estimated to be about 3 trillion market cap. Uh, this would be the total crypto economy. And this was uh, based on data from a few weeks ago. Uh, I, uh, I do acknowledge that uh, a lot has changed in the the crypto world in the last few weeks. Uh, but that doesn't take away from the, the core uh the core benefits that web3 inherently provides so uh and we also have like third over 35000 34000 uh engineers and developers that are providing open source crypto and web3 project code we also have uh, over 30 billion in venture capital that has been de uh, deployed in crypto uh and then there is currently an estimated uh, uh, 80 million wallets in the world and uh, DeFi, which is decentralized finance, uh, these are again uh, decentralized apps in the uh, in the crypto economy built on blockchain. Uh, so that was the total seventy four billion was the total value locked there, and uh, and NFTs uh, we'll uh, dive into that in a little bit uh, generated twenty two billion uh, worth in the in the last one or two years alone. So if you look at this, uh, Web three really has uh, exploded in a in a good way uh, in the last uh, couple of years or so. Okay, now let's look at the Web three creator economy. Uh, so, the first use case that uh, all of us uh, we, uh, <laughs> might have heard of is NFTs. So, NFTs are non fungible tokens. It's uh, it's basically a cri cryptographic token that exists on the blockchain and it points to a real world asset. It could be uh, it could be anything. It could be art, which is what usually uh, NFTs are used for. Uh, but it could also be uh, music. It could be videos. It could also point to real estate. So an NFT, by uh, by definition, and the essential nature of the NFT is that it's a uh, it's a unique cryptographic token, and uh, the uniqueness provides uh, a lot of benefits uh, and a lot of use cases that are yet uh, to be explored. So we're just scratching the surface with art on nfts uh there are plenty of use cases where the non-fungible nature which which what it essentially means is that uh you cannot exchange the uh, a non-fungible token for another one because by nature they are unique so as a result uh they have become a foundational building block for creating digital economies and thriving communities so um especially artists uh, have capitalized on NFTs as a way to sell directly to their fans and build direct relationships with them. So in 2021, uh, over 20 billion uh, in value was created uh, via NFTs. You might have heard of the first uh, NFT that was uh, uh, sold at Christie's uh, auction uh, at over 69 uh, million. Uh, it was by an artist called Beeple. And uh, that kind of uh, started the hype around NFTs. But uh, by uh, nature, NFTs provide a way for a creator to monetize their art digitally. Uh, so uh, before NFTs were a thing, uh, if I was a digital artist, there were very few platforms where I could uh, sell my art. Uh, and there was no verifiable way to say that this is the original copy of my art. And uh, there was no way for me to get paid a royalty every time my art was used. So anyone could just copy my art and use it. And there was no verifi verifiable way for me to prevent that. Uh, with NFTs, uh, we do have uh, a technology that will allow us to uh, ena one, enable proof of ownership. Uh, and two, uh, enable uh, royalty payments to creators as well. Uh, there are a lot of uh, there are there are a lot of things that are yet to be you know um, uh, made clear uh, in the NFT space in terms of how would you handle integrity, how would you handle uh, you know uh, copies or, or counterfeits. Uh, there are a few open questions, but uh, NFTs uh, by nature provide the the most 
feasible way to prevent uh, or to or to protect uh, ownership and uh, as a result they have become the de facto uh, way for digital creators to monetize their work so if you look at this um, there was uh, let's compare between web 2 and web 3 uh, what was the uh, the revenue and the, the value that was created for creators, right? So if I'm a creator on Spotify, uh, so Spotify as a platform has 11 million artists and every artist, uh, if you were to look at the revenue of Spotify, uh, on an average, uh, an artist would make $600. Uh, if you were to like just divide the entire revenue uh, over the number of artists. Uh, of course, this number varies, not everybody makes the same. There are some that make a lot and some very less. But on an average, this would be the, the amount an artist would make by streaming their music on Spotify. Again, this is the centralized nature, right? Spotify is a corporation. They own, uh, they would probably like own the content and they'll pay you a little bit for the content that you make. Uh, similarly, YouTube, right? Like uh, you were there youtube currently has over 37 million channels uh and on an average every um every channel makes 405 dollars which is not not a lot and this is uh, and youtube does not make content that's the uh the biggest thing to note like spotify youtube none of them make any content they do not spend on inventory this is all creator uh driven content user or user made content uh but uh the final winners in this uh game are spotify and youtube not the creators themselves uh however if you were to look at nfts uh there are twenty two thousand plus creators till date uh but three uh, almost four billion in value was created uh so if you look at the average uh every creator that's uh in the nft space that's creating digital art on nfts makes over like one hundred and seventy thousand uh, dollars so if you were to compare that with uh the web 2 platforms you can see the vast difference. So Web3 is very, very clearly, uh, very creator driven. Uh, it helps uh, creators own their content, connect directly and sell directly to their fans. And uh, the token economy makes them all co-owners. Uh, and I found this interesting that uh, selling 25 music NFTs uh, at like uh, 10 cents equivalent like 0.1 ETH uh, pays more than a million streams so uh, if you were to make some music and a million people really liked it and streamed it on Spotify uh, you would not even make as much as selling just you know simple 25 music NFTs on uh, on a platform uh, like wherever uh, music NFTs are supported. So you can look at the, the vast discrepancy and uh, Web3 uh, is definitely pro creators, uh, much, much more than uh, the Web2 counterparts. Uh, the other use case for Web3 in the creator economy has been gaming. Uh, so this is a huge market. Uh, most of the NFT sales that happened in the last year uh, 20 a large percentage of that were uh, for gaming uh, so 20 percent of nft sales were gaming related so this could be uh anything from if i as a creator uh create a, an avatar or a, a new sword uh design for uh, a game a, a widely popular game uh then and sell it as an nft and every time it's used or owned or resold i would get a cut of the the sale as royalty so that is how uh nfts and gaming intersect uh and uh, a lot of crypto wallet activity again happens from games so 50 almost 50 percent 49 50 percent uh is in the gaming space and uh we have over 50 plus live web3 games with more than 1k unique uh on-chain users so people that are on the blockchain that are uh, playing live Web3 games uh, and contributing to this token economy and uh, also earning from it, right? So not only do you uh, play games, you will also earn every time you play in terms of tokens. And that is, again, the, the core uh, value of Web3. So as we can see, so NFTs and gaming are two major use cases. But this is, again, still touching the surface. There have been 
multiple other use cases that uh, have been mushrooming in the last few uh, months even and uh, we are just getting started okay now let's look at what meta is doing as a company in the web3 space so uh, as we can see now uh, we are at the very beginning of a new uh, phase uh, or a new uh, version of the internet so we are on a journey to uh, enable this uh, in whatever way possible and participate it uh, this is the next generation of the internet and uh, we want to help uh, build the future of social connections on web3 so the metaverse as you might call it as you might have heard uh, isn't not just about new technologies it's also about a way to help deliver uh, next generation of social experiences so we at meta want to build a strong ecosystem that supports millions of creators uh, in the best way possible uh, while preserving the the core nature of web3 which is decentralization and ownership so we want to help facilitate web3 uh, in a way where uh, we are uh, enabling web3 to be uh, better but not in the way where uh, web2 was, had its drawbacks right so we understand that uh, facebook uh, was a part of web2 uh, but in web3 we want to uh, build and leverage the the core nature of decentralization and the openness uh, of web3 as well so and how are we doing this uh, we are we have three principles uh, first one is going to be interoperability and portability. So we want to enable a way uh, to seamlessly carry and manage your identity, uh, payment methods and purchases across platforms. So that is going to be our first tenant. Uh, and we want to be blockchain agnostic. Uh, we want to support uh, decentralized and centralized both forms to unlock parallel unparalleled experiences and uh, this is definitely going to provide more economic opportunity for people and businesses um, and then we also want to help creators and businesses unlock innovation through that digital assets and uh, and ultimately if everyone in the metaverse or uh, in the web3 space succeeds we as a company as well will be successful okay and uh, we want to emphasize on this uh, responsible innovation is our uh, first motto uh, so we have four tenets privacy equity and inclusion safety and integrity and then economic opportunity and interoperability so we want to uh, double down on the best features of web3 uh, which would be decentralization interoperability uh and uh, ownership co-ownership rather than centralized ownership so we want to provide that um while making sure we do not compromise on privacy and safety and integrity so this is going to be the new uh, uh new uh paradigm for meta to operate in the metaverse as well okay so we uh, our first project on the metaverse uh, would be uh, digital collectibles or nfts uh, so what are we building so we just launched uh, to a handful of creators a way to be able to share your digital collectibles uh, that you created on instagram so you will be able to connect your digital wallet uh, which is a third party wallet and share your digital collectibles with your millions of followers and uh, and then we'll also enable automatic tagging of both the creator and the collector so this is the just the first step uh, so we want to uh, make it uh, seamless and easy for people that are not tech savvy or crypto savvy to be able to mint buy sell collect nfts on our platforms and the first step would be uh, to be able to display your as uh, digital assets the next step would be to create and mint and then the third would be to buy and sell as well so uh, this is some screenshots of uh, what we launched recently uh, this is a way for you to you know connect your wallet and uh, share your nfts on instagram so up until now if you were a creator on instagram there was no way for you to share your uh, nft something that you created on instagram directly uh, with this feature, we will be enabling you as a creator 
um, to connect your wallet and share the collectibles that you have created or the ones that you bought uh, or with your Instagram followers. Uh, and then we are using uh, the, the core tenets of uh, Web3 to uh, display uh, ownership and uh, creatorship as well. So we will be, uh, if you look at this, it will show that this is an NFT uh, via the, the digital collectible tag and uh, we'll also be able to you'll also be able to see who owns the collectible and who created who's the original creator as well and this is going to be recorded on the blockchain which is decentralized again so we don't own that data okay so why did we build nfts uh so by building support for NF nfts we want to uh, essentially make the whole concept of non-fungible tokens more accessible uh till now nft was uh was this uh technology that many digital creators were afraid of because it seemed so inaccessible there is a few steps you need to do in order to uh you know create a crypto wallet uh go and mint your nft and then sell it uh it was not very accessible to people that were not crypto native uh, so our whole aim of uh, enabling nfts on instagram is to improve accessibility to all that the the millions of creators that uh that so that we make it so easy for them to create and sell and buy nfts that they can focus on their art instead of you know trying to onboard onto the the uh complexities of crypto uh so we want to definitely lower barriers to entry and make the experience seamless uh and while we do that uh, we have two major tenets that we will uh uh definitely not compromise on first is safety so we want nfts on instagram to be safe and enjoyable so integrity and safety uh will definitely be uh, our first priority um and then you can keep your account secure through our tools and also to put uh digital collectibles that go against uh community guidelines uh so that uh, we are building a an experience that's safe uh and enjoyable for everyone and the second one is that uh, we know that uh, a lot of flack um, has come to blockchain technologies in terms of sustainability. And uh, as a result, we are aware of that and we want to help reduce emissions impact uh, as, uh, as we uh, create more and more products in Web3. So we will be uh, purchasing renewable energy in order to offset the emissions impact uh, as a result so that we are net uh neutral in terms of uh our impact in the on the environment so this is uh the reason why we're entering uh this space with nfts uh this is going to be the first project uh in the web3 space but uh we want to uh participate in the best way and provide creators the best plat best uh possible opportunities to connect to their fans uh, while uh, leveraging all the, the core benefits of being on a Web3 uh, platform. And uh, we know that this is, we acknowledge that this is uh, just the beginning. Uh, we have a long way to go and we are super excited about the future of Web3. I hope that was useful. Uh, thank you so much for uh, listening through. Uh, I welcome feedback and comments. You can reach me on my LinkedIn. Uh, that's my LinkedIn profile as well. Thank you.